find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh, check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at sliceonbroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. Today's December 2nd. It's my mom's birthday today. Oh, December happy birthday, Malengo's mom. Happy birthday, Mom Lingo. You know, happy birthday, Mrs. Akbo Sambe. Yeah, you got it right there. <laughs> and this is the Rambling Movie Minute. Episode number 54. Yes. Uh, where we talk everything movies from the week before, current, and still yet to come. On today's show, we'll be talking everything from Star Wars to Jurassic Park World and other stuff. I don't know what else is on the rundown. But it's <laughs> going to be it. exciting. <laughs> the odds are ever in our favor. Uh, from Pittsburgh, PA, I am Lango at Rambling Mango. And I am in studio today with the Sorg of Sorgatron. Yes, I watched the A movie. Actually, a few movies. Uh, getting the HBO in, of course, uh, as I have been the last few weeks. I don't know. We just had off nights, and we just said, hey, what's on HBO? What's on Netflix? Let's let's attack this thing. Do it. And also, also, oh, also yeah. Supernatural. You also saw Supernatural. Oh, I saw about 11 episodes of Su- Supernatural since Sunday. <laughs> so that's a thing. Maybe I'll talk about. And our uh, New York connection... Mad Mike, how's it going, sir? Oh, I'm doing fantastic. I just ran in from work, and boy, are my arms tired from <laughs> lifting lots of toys. From lifting lots of toys. Lots of toys. I work for Santa now. Nice. That's a thing. Are we all? Are we all over the uh, turkey fullness? Yeah, we've all, already. We've all coasted we're through all, that. We're all um, two days in the work. Unless you see me nod off mid-show, I should be okay. Nice. Because speaking of turkeys, I was carving some up with my lightsaber. (gasps) Transition, lightsaber, Star Wars trailer. (laughs) Wonderful. Wonderful transition, (laughs) Lingo. And it's full of sand. Uh, So, I like the trailer. I Here's the problem for me, biasedness. Everything J.J. Abrams does, I love. So I don't, I see nothing wrong. Of course, there are haters out there and people are like, there can't be a black stormtrooper. Okay, first and of all, we don't know that he's going to be a stormtrooper. Oh, exactly. Oh, oh, oh. I mean, guys, he looks, you watch he, looks at midnight? he looks kind of dark for a stormtrooper. Yes, that could be the new line. But <laughs> but that doesn't mean, and, and by the way, yes, and I watched At Midnight and they explained the whole thing and I need a hype nerd. Yeah, um, I believe that would be Chachi. Chachi, you know, Chachi already has the video game Bling. If you don't know, go look up the At Midnight. Um, uh, what would it be? It's from Monday, uh, and uh, they they set the record straight on 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 the clone theory for uh, uh, multiracial uh, stormtroopers. I I'm guess I'm gonna have to listen to that. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. Because the way I see it is like it doesn't really matter i'm i base a lot of my stuff too based on the uh clone wars cartoon series that came out Mm -hmm. and like so but then again the argument is we don't know that he's a stormtrooper so it doesn't really matter there were there were two big thoughts i had about the star wars trailer two big ones um one when when that guy first popped up the first and absolute first thing i thought of was a scene from Spaceballs. <laughs> Coming I'm to Desert. Go- I'm not going to say what the line is, but it is my favorite visual gag in the history of cinema. And it's, the, it's the first thing I thought of where two um, stormtroopers are using an Afro pick to comb the desert. Um, <laughs> the second thing, there was a whole lot of not actors in the trailer. 
Yeah, that's true. There weren't. Like, I thought that was interesting. I, I get that it's just a teaser trailer, but you can't give us something. I I mean... Like Han Solo's I mean, arm or something? <laughs> yeah, or, or like the be- or like Chewie's ass or just, just <laughs> something like give me Chewie's ass that just so I know it's real <laughs> <laughs> like sure I can see the Millennium Falcon but Billy D. Williams could be driving that we don't know <laughs> he could be driving there uh... with a with a 40 a Colt 45 right in the dash we don't know what's going on with the Falcon what was the other big controversy that came out? It was uh, at the end, the lightsaber. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the physics of the lightsaber are under debate right now. <laughs> of course they because are. Because there's a hilt. Um, is he's going to burn his hand off? How does that work with the force crystal? How, how about the physics of the lightsaber in general? <laughs> <laughs> like, really? Like, we can, we can suspend disbelief that when you activate a lightsaber, it goes out exactly the right length you need it to. <laughs> but, but we can't suspend disbelief that oh it has two little prongs on the side too stop it mad mike you are crushing my childhood as we <laughs> speak things are falling apart around me it's like i'm in uh i was about to say requiem for a dream but that is not what i meant what's just the, use the force Malanga. what's the what's use the movie the where it's a dream within a dream within a dream that's inception inception it's like i'm in inception Inception. Uh, what happened in the box office this weekend? Well, let me tell you. Hunger Games. That's it. Oh, yeah? Penguins of Madagascar and Horrible Bosses. Horrible Bosses came tied. I don't know. came in fifth. And Penguins of Madagascar came in second. Um, I did not do the math on Horrible Bosses to see if uh, it kept on par with the first one. I... I heard the reviews were good on this movie, mm-hmm. but I did not care enough to go see it. And the fact that Interstellar and Big Hero 6 beat it out, um, yeah, it's saying something, especially on Thanksgiving weekend, where people didn't really have anything to do, except go watch well, Hunger Games. Yeah, <sighs> but Thanksgiving weekend, you're not going to want to go see uh, raunchy comedies. Yeah, I guess, uh, I guess it would... Because, like, Hunger Games, I mean... The numbers on Hunger Games weren't that great. They were expecting them to get the second week around eighty, and they only pull, they pulled in about fifty six. They took a fifty like a fifty three percent drop. Um, and I mean, Penguins of Madagascar actually did pretty well for what they were averaging, uh, thirty five. I, I mean, that's pretty good for first week opening. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, I mean, I don't know. We'll talk about we'll talk about uh, Hunger Games later on in the show because this is a movie I was forced to go see. Well, I wasn't forced to go see it, but I had a strong opinion of not seeing it. Okay. And okay, we'll get into that. I went. We'll get into that. Um, the other big trailer that I'm excited about, I'm extremely excited about, is Jurassic Park World. Uh, yes. So oh, this, we have size. There was this <laughs> argument. Somebody tried to say um, that the third movie just sucked. And then I, I had to think about it. I was like, no. The second movie is where they decided to bring a T-Rex to the freaking <laughs> And that was my third. favorite part. What are you talking about? <laughs> that was the worst <laughs> of the movie. That was, that was the part where I was freaking out in the theater. I'm like, oh, my God, this is awesome. I think what are you talking about? Think, and like the third one was just an excuse to have raptors kill people. Oh, come on. Every good thing that happens in Jurassic Park happens on the island. Okay. And that's why I love Jurassic Park 3. And this is why I am going to love this movie. Nature finds a way, man. Yes. Yes. So one argument that I heard, which I thought was hilarious, is here in the Jurassic Park world was like, okay, this has failed three times now. Let's go do it. And then they actually built the park. How many sites were there in, in in the lore so far? Like, isn't there like up to site C? Yeah. <laughs> so this was the. I mean, it's been a few years. It's been a while. So it's is a. Oh, we got this. It's like yeah, somebody yeah. bought the franchise and went ahead, and it, then decided to make a really dangerous dinosaur. 
<laughs> that yeah. we didn't even have before. But so, what makes it crazier is you have people that are actually going. They're like, yes, we've we've heard the this news. This is a good idea. It oh, is, yeah. You remember that time? Yeah. Wait, wait. Wasn't there a T-Rex that was running through like L.A. or San Francisco or something? Uh, I don't You know, you it's know. Perfectly safe, Mike. I'm pretty sure that was a. I, I'm pretty sure. No, I'm not going to say that. The good. same people who bought into the Jurassic Park franchise are the ones who vacation during the summer at Camp Crystal Lake and the same ones that say, oh, yeah, it's perfectly cool feed um, Gizmo at, at 12.01. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> All of those things, nothing bad will happen. It's totally going to be fine, especially so, if you have a lot of sex at that at that at that lake. So if you're especially. not on, if you're you haven't seen this yet or you're not on video, um, <laughs> it's very much they show Jurassic World, uh, which is uh, the the park is open. It looks like Sea World. There's these cool hamster balls that you go meet brontosauruses in, um, and then all hell goes loose because apparently they have decided <laughs> to do a hybrid dinosaur, which uh, I think it was uh, a, a Velociraptor, a T-Rex, a snake, and something else. Oh, a blowfish or something. Um, I, I'll, 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 I'll point it out, but it was, it was some kind of fish, hmm. puffer fish, I think. Actually, with the tentacles on the front, look kind of like that. Sounds like a great idea. <laughs> I mean, I mean I, if I had you know access to genetics in a SeaWorld's type dinosaur park, why wouldn't I want to make the most vicious dinosaur ever yeah. to kill us freaking all as we're trapped on this island because we built it on it? A- I just make a giant corgi. That's it. Like the corgi the size of a rhino. Why aren't we why aren't we trying to genetically engineer like a more adorable and less ferocious dinosaur, like a huggable dinosaur? I mean the market for like a small huggable uh uh uh, uh, uh hornless t- uh, triceratops? I mean come on. Yes. I don't know. I mean I mean they're they're obviously taking this the whole wrong way. Uh like like Sword. let's let's Sword. take a, Sword. let's Sword. take well no, Are you let's, advocating let's take, are you advocating a teacup T Rex? A teacup T Rex? Yes, dude. A teacup T Rex will clean up the scraps underneath your uh, 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 underneath your table. He'll keep he'll he'll keep the kids out of your yard. Um, I mean, what could go wrong? I love it. I think it's good. <laughs> Speaking of other movies, we're, we're booking we're booking Jurassic World too. <laughs> The, the, the kind no, of gentler we're booking Jurassic life. That's Jurassic... what we're doing. We're booking Jurassic life. Uh, precisely. Yeah. <laughs> so this next story I added was kind of just I thought it was New York City or New York film critics critic circle. Wow, I cannot say New York film critics circle announced their rent, their winners for their 2014 awards on Monday. And I thought this was kind of funny because, like, for the majority, uh, Boyhood is the one that won. It's kind of like indie, you know, this is this is the thing with, like, indie films, right? This is where they, like, these are the, the contests and awards that they start swooping up right before we get to January, February with the Academy Awards and whatnot. But under Best Animated Film, the Lego Movie. Oh, I thought that was hilarious. Like, wait, this doesn't seem like this should be here. Like, what if these don't belong? Well, I mean, what else would you have given it to? I would. I would try to see what what it was going up against. Mm-hmm. I mean, this was the year of no Pixar movies, but I mean, we did have How to Train Your Dragon two, which was pretty good. I I, I bet it, you say better than the Lego Movie, really. Mm, really, I don't know. I don't know. I, I still like the Lego movie a lot. Because How to Train Your Dragon 2 is also a sequel. True. Yeah. It's also a sequel. Lego movie, especially if you have no exposure to the Lego video games, this is something completely and entirely new for you. And Because I know the first time I played a Lego video game, my hair was blown back. I was just like, oh, wow, we can actually do this. Like, they have an animation style for building and destroying Legos. That's amazing. But like, if you if you haven't seen it before, the Lego movie is just gonna blow you're your right. Hair you're right. It, it was a whole different style. It it, it, it wasn't the. I, I mean, there's there's all kinds of techniques. I was reading about Big Hero Six and into the, the you know how how they kind of developed a whole new technique to do that, right? Um, mm-hmm. And maybe that's it. Maybe, I mean, this, is it is this like when they're saying best animated film, best story, best look, best technique? 
best new style, best innovation. Like that's that's like maybe that's all in consideration. It's New York. Yeah, I mean, cause, cause, cause <laughs> okay, okay. Like thanks, I... <laughs> thanks, Malingo. You know what? You, Just you because sm- everything is awesome in New York doesn't mean you know. <laughs> As you stick your finger up to the sky, you New Yorkers. Um, I don't know. Oh, lost your mic. You lost my mic. Hey, you're back again. I don't know what that was about. Why, hello. Hi. Hi, Internet. You're back again. Hey, uh, if so we all know that um, Breaking Bad was a pretty good series. I'm yet to finish it. But it's it's pretty good. Haven't started it. Haven't started it. I haven't started it. It's yet on, to start it. It's on the yeah. list. Just haven't it's, got to it. It's good. It suffers the. Uh, it's one of the things where I don't know if you guys have had the Netflix like counter effect where you binge on Netflix and it like it's something that can benefit a show, mm-hmm. but then you get have the counter effect where you over binge. Where it's like I just don't care. I can't do this anymore. Um, or, oh, or or you start, I, I have not experienced that yet. Or you start experiencing like when there's the dips in show quality for whatever reason. Mm. Like you notice more that like they have different showrunners, or maybe it was in the middle of that uh, writer's strike or something. Yeah, Californication took a turn. <laughs> like last couple seasons, it was just like, all right, guess I got to keep getting through this. All right, sure. And if you if you binge watch Heroes. Heroes had the same thing happen. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Big time. Big time. Um, because, I, like, not, not a lot of people saw Hero Season 4. It was actually pretty good. I never finished it. I honestly yeah, never finished there. it. I never finished I'd it. I'd honestly get back into it. Okay. Season 4, they, they picked it back up. It was good. I, I, I've wanted to just go back and rewatch the whole thing as, as one straight shot. I feel like I'd be angry. Do you remember, like, we were, like, in our office was all about heroes. I know. That's why like, I feel like I'd be angry. Like, th- I think that was the first series where we were just, like, like Tuesday morning, we talk heroes. Like, I watched heroes before I watched Raw. Wow. Yes, that's legitimate. I watched heroes before I watched Raw. Like, I'm like, Raw, I can catch up on. Heroes, I need to watch immediately. Like that, and that's the only show that's ever been on Monday nights where I've really had to, you know, has been appointment viewing for me. Mm-hmm. That's impressive. So, uh, anyway, so so what, tell me about uh, Better Call Saul. Yeah, so it's a spinoff. The lawyer from the character was such a dynamic character that they figured AMC's already signed off on the sequel, um, which I, th- I think starts in a couple of weeks, actually. Uh, but yeah, we're going to see kind of like where this character originated from. And if it's successful, which I think is interesting because I, I can't see how it wouldn't be successful. It's a pretty good character. But if it's successful, we get to it. We might even see a better story, which is all a spinoff off of Breaking Bad of the rise of Gus, mm-hmm. which is a very I would be very excited to see that. Um, uh, but yes, I don't want to spoil anything for people who haven't seen it, but I think this is interesting. The route, I, I think it's more interesting that they're staying clear of, uh, of like Netflix for this. They're deciding to put it on their network on AMC. I mean, I, it, Breaking Bad was an AMC show, but for a spinoff, um, I thought it was interesting that they're, oh, but, 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 but networks are notorious for trying to do spinoffs. Yeah. So, so why, why not, you know? I don't know. I guess with the with this day and age of Netflix, it just seems like why aren't we on Netflix? But yeah, I think this is going to be something that's good. I'm looking forward to it. Okay. Um, I'll have to get through the first thing first. <laughs> yeah, the, I don't think the thing is with Breaking Bad. I don't think it actually had a dip. I think it's just one of those things where you had to pay attention, and if you did not pay attention, like it had a tendency. And, and those to are the kind of series slow. that I feel benefit from the binge watching because. Uh, I have the hardest time now that I'm caught up with like certain shows like Walking Dead or or something like that or you know, especially Walking Dead. I was half a discussion after the the series finale this or the mid season finale this week was who is that guy again mm. that we haven't seen like we saw once and I hadn't seen him like for another season. Um, so like that's stretchiness. Uh, that's why I kind of want to go see back see heroes because again it was week to week and it's trying to remember okay who is this guy again oh that's that guy like like re- remembering hey remember that guy we showed in our first episode and now we're twenty episodes in yeah. hey he's important now 
hope you remembered him. Um, it, it just doesn't work week to week. We're all busy. We're all thinking about other things. You drop in to watch yeah. a show. It, it, it's hard to follow something like that. I mean, that argument definitely holds true with the with case in point. Um, that like even today at work we were talking about Star Wars one, two, and three. Yeah, and I said yes. Alone, those movies were pretty hard to get through. But if you watch them straight through one, two, and three, it's actually not a bad series. Like uh, it's like, like, see, like, like I think that also depends on your perspective. Yeah, because I saw the Star Wars movies in order, like one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, see, that's where I would stop because I still think four, five, and six hands down. Well, no, but I mean, I didn't because I hadn't seen the original trilogy before. Mm-hmm. I didn't think I didn't think one, two, and three were that bad. Oh, so you're I, coming I, from the you hadn't even seen. I see. No, I had never seen it. I didn't. I didn't watch Star Wars until all three of the uh, prequels came out. Huh. Yeah, I mean, like I said, like I told the, the guy at work that I was talking to about this, it was like, yeah, like the first time I saw it, I, ha- I, I was so upset. Like every time I leave the theater, I'm like, what the hell are they doing? But after watching it again, sequentially. And that's the thing. I've never gone back. Like generally, I've not gone back. Yeah. I, I, I have recently uh, I got the prequels, and I'm waiting for that time to sit down and be like, okay. How did this really go? Because yeah. I know going in, and we saw twice. We went to see the pre the, the first prequel, and I fell asleep the first time. Then my dad <laughs> fell asleep the second time, and it was just like, oh, this is not good. This is not good. I love playing the pod racer game though. So there's that. So, um, but yeah, I mean, even there's there's some shows right now. Like this is the last season of uh, one of the HBO series, um, Newsroom. And I love Newsroom. I am waiting till Newsroom ends before I watch it. You know, when I get something like that, like, I don't, like, I keep forgetting to watch it. And it's not something I watch with my wife, so it's a little harder for me to say, okay, I need to get on that one. Um, I, I Like, I saw I saw the first episode, and then mm-hmm. I saw, like, oh, episode three's out. And I'm like, eh, you know what? Just I, wait. I'll get to it when I get to it. Just you know? wait. It's with, so did the much same better. thing with True Detective. Oh my gosh, True Detective you, was you almost, 100 you really times kinda, better. You really kind of needed to on True Detective. Like I, I was just like, I'm gonna wait till the series is over. Yeah, and I watched it straight through, and I was like, this is freaking amazing. I would have been so angry having to wait a whole freaking week. Yes, I am that spoiled. Thank you, Netflix. <laughs> hey, let's jump to uh, what we watched. Okay, um, um, Malenko. I, I do before we jump to what I had a bit of breaking news. I just saw on my Twitter feed. Yeah, uh, the cast for the Suicide Squad is announced. Yes, I did. Um, I don't, actually, I don't. I didn't know. I saw something about that they were definitely slated to start production in February. I didn't see anything about the cast. Yeah, um, Will Smith is going to play Deadshot. Wow. Yeah, I yes, sign me up. How yes. much money did they pay him for that? I oh, don't know, man. but Tom Hardy is going to play Rick Flag, the uh, leader of the Suicide Squad. Jared Leto is going to be Joker, and Margot Robbie from Wolf of Wall Street is going to be Harley Quinn. Do Do you guys feel like I don't know jaded whenever they're like? We know you're invested with these characters that we've shown you through Arrow and we've shown you through the Flash, and now we're just gonna like kind of just retool these characters. You know, uh, again, I'm just kind of used to it that uh, DC on 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 different screens and, uh, are basically completely different animals. Um, well, they're they're building a live action multiverse. Yeah, which I hate the multiverse in their comics. I hate the multiverse in their live action, but this movie, Suicide Squad, I'm actually super pumped for. Like, I am on board with this immediately. I'm on board. I'm gonna have to and wait. I don't. And see. I don't say that about DC. I I, 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 I think, I think all across the board, um, it, you know, the decision to do different actors and split this off. This is a, this is a corporate Hollywood decision. Where they don't have somebody from DZ in, st- in charge. Now they do have, on the other hand, and this is a, they have to convince somebody at Warner Brothers. Versus Marvel doesn't really have to convince anybody. 
Marvel is the Warner Brothers in this case, right? Marvel isn't going off to Disney, right, to say, hey, can we do this? Um, they're just kind of doing it. Uh, in this case, we are getting, like, Zack Snyder is going to kind of is going to exec produce this. I imagine he's going to have his hands in the ser- in, in in a lot of the series uh, as we get into the DC movies. Um, and it looks like uh, Jeff Johns is going to be involved as well. So I think anything you see Jeff Johns attached to, you can breathe a little easier with uh, as far as television because he is he is there. Uh, was it Kevin Feige or or you know that's doing Marvel Studios? Like mm-hmm. he is there, that guy that gets it. And I mean, he's a freaking COO, and he's still writing comics. You know, I mean, he, um, he he's freaking Jeff Johns. He's freaking Jeff Johns. Yes, <laughs> like, he is. A, he has a Lego character. He's the Brian. Johnson. He's the Brian Michael Bendis of uh, of uh, of DC. Is that fair? Did I just piss off a whole audience uh... here. I'd say that's close. I'd say it's close. <laughs> yeah. I, I, mean, I, no, I, no, I mean, I'd say he's more like the Joe Quesada. Okay. Okay. Well, I mean, well, he, he is, is the Joe Quesada. He's flat out the Joe Quesada. Yeah. Okay, we're getting out of movies. I'm sorry. This is panel rights uh, uh, territory <laughs> here. Uh, LB, there's the a Petri discussion time. for Joke you. Family. Petri Time family uh, welcomes you for a, they took a good time to make good wine. But we're taking good time to make a good podcast. Let's talk about what we watched. Lango? Yes. <laughs> well, I'll go last because it's okay. just going to be a mad. Well, I got a about... review. I watched Big Hero Six. Okay. Speaking yeah. of Marvel, um, if you are a reader of Big Hero Six, yeah, throw it out. Throw throw it out. Don't even don't even go there because <laughs> I read there is a there is a six issue run of Big Hero Six. It's later. Yeah. Um, and I started reading more about. i again like Guardians of the Galaxy. I did not experience anything of the original going into this i had not yet and i kept myself clean hmm. right mm-hmm. so um they re- retold everything to turn it more into a kind of a disney movie um in the marvel version uh they, they have marvel characters it's in the marvel world in the comic yeah it's in tokyo it has sunfire and silver samurai of x-men fame obviously they can't so use in th- tokyo it's not that san it's fran not tokyo? san fran tokyo this oh, was wow. made up the robot, the way the robot is, is made up. The brother, the backstory of the parents dying. Nope. Wow. Nope. So it's In the just comic, he Disney-fied. made the kid made the robot to protect him as a fighter. Yeah, because uh, it actually, I think there's also a character called Hero in DC mm-hmm. that is like um, he was Toy Man at one point, and he makes some kind of robots too. Like, is, yeah, am I? Yeah, I, I think I think so. But um, but generally, uh, I enjoy the movie. Yeah, like take it as a Disney movie with a little bit of Marvel influence. And yes, it does feel very uh, Incredibles ish. Yeah, definitely feels Incredibles. Still think Incredibles out- outweighs it. Oh, oh, for sure. But- um, it is a better movie than Wreck-It Ralph. Really? You think- really? I think so. I'll take I don't that. Know about I'll take that. that one to task. I think it is. I don't. I don't know about that. I mean, I liked it a lot. Mm-hmm. I don't. I don't even know if it's better than the Incredibles. The nods they do give the Marvel are pretty fantastic. No, the nods that, they give the Marvel are good. That's true. But I, I think if they made Incredibles now, now that they're associated with Marvel, Incredibles would be a completely different movie. Well, too. yeah, of course. I think I think Incredibles happened because they didn't have Marvel. Yeah. I think they were like, well, let's make our own thing. I mean, how many nods to Marvel and DC were there in that movie? For I really kind of hope whenever they make Incredibles two. That it's in the same universe as the Marvel animated cartoons. So, like, like Big Hero Six kind of crosses over, maybe. I can yeah, see that. Like, that would like, be nice. I would love to see Baymax, Frozen. You're going you're gonna to see that for like a Christmas special, like Toy Story is doing now. <laughs> but, but why not? I I can completely see them doing, especially with something like Big Hero Six. Uh, there will be sequels. Oh yes, there will be sequels. And yeah, because you can you can already have them interact in the video games. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it, so there's gonna be infinities. There's gonna be everything else. Um, I like their version, and uh, and I really digged it. I really I had a lot of fun watching that movie. The one the one sequel that I wanted to see, I wanted to see a cliffhanger from Big Hero Six, was that the brother actually did not die. I thought that would have been awesome. Okay. If they, I don't know if I should have said spoilers in there, 
Yeah, but, I was uh, going to say, you probably should have gone to the spoiler zone. Yeah, it's an one. early movie thing, so it's kind of like... That's true. It's kind of like the thing that sets everything in motion, so... Um, but it, and I'm also I'm also them. very surprised that the trailer didn't really like the trailer was about the boy and the robot, mm-hmm. and you saw n- very little else. You saw the team, but not as the superheroes that they become. Mm-hmm. Right. That was a very interesting choice. I thought. Like I feel like well, I I think they know Baymax is. The most developed character in the movie. It's the identifiable thing. It's, yeah. it's something different. It's their Wally, mm-hmm. and, and yeah. I think that's what they it, were going for. It's so weird that we're like saying that it's the same company. <laughs> it is. It is. <laughs> it's just like formula. John Lesson or Lester. Uh, Lassen, I, gonna, Lassen, yeah, whatever. Lassen, we, Lassen. Yes, we Lassen. know he's sitting there just laughing with a big smile on his face, saying. <laughs> this is what I dreamed of as a kid. But even more so, um, and, and again, uh, to reiterate what we talked about when we saw the preview for Feast that ran before this, I love the surprise of those videos, or those, those, those clips. The oh, shorts yeah. Oh, the, dog. Dog short, yeah. Uh, the shorts they have before it, uh, I, I just want a collection of those. I don't know. Yeah, that would be awesome. I know the studio in Canada that was doing the Pixar shorts yeah. closed down. Uh, so I don't know who's who did that one. But you know that probably dissipated to like all the other studios. Yeah. I mean I, I was surprised that this was the Burbank studio that did this movie. You know. But um no no, I love Big Hero Six if you get a chance. It's still number three in the theaters. It, it, yeah, it, it's it, surprising. It, it started the, I think it got a big big jump from the holiday season. Um, my theater was I think, I think fairly, be number- I think my theater was fairly full. It was definitely kind of bumped hmm. down to the smaller of the theaters at the car mic I go to. Um, but it, it did, it did very well. And I think, I think it was a, well, well we're going to go to the movies. The kids are going to dig this one. And did, did, was there anything else kid wise? Yeah. Competition. Uh, Madagascar. Madagascar penguins. And uh, man, I think, uh, I think big arrow six is just was stronger. There were a lot of kids there just in general, and I'm sure like the other half went to Madagascar, but still. Um, also, watch The Escape Plan with Schwarzenegger and Stallone. Uh, fun little movie if you liked Expendables, crazy stuff. It, um, it's a good HBO movie. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's a, a really good HBO movie. It's a fantastic yeah. HBO movie. And as I mentioned mm-hmm. earlier, I got into Supernatural after my nephew and my sister just kept going. And... The, the entire family there was telling me how great Supernatural is and all the stuff they do, like, later when they start, like, I think, jumping the shark and just doing whatever. Um, but uh, it, it, it's definitely, uh, you see a lot of similarities with uh, Constantine to the point where we were watching, we, like I said, we got through, we, we binged, like, ten episodes on Sunday. And we got to some of the episodes, and we're like, didn't we just see this in Constantine? Like, well, this exact storyline? What's in, that? Aren't they brothers in Supernatural? Well, yeah, they're brothers. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so you're recommending it? I mean, I'm recommending right now, it. I'm definitely recommending it. IMBD no. gives it like clear a nine out of ten, close to that. For TV.com well, I mean, is giving it a nine for Supernatural. Yeah, yeah. I'm digging it. I'm digging it. But you're it's, not on for ten seasons without you know. Yes. Yeah. Apparently, the main storyline ended in season five. Mm-hmm. That's all they planned for. Everything else is like, okay. And, uh, you know, they get into the point where the stuff they're describing to him was very Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Like, there's one where they go to a Comic Con. There's one where they go, there. it's a musical. There's one where they enter, like, real life and they meet them, like, their counterparts that play their parts in the show. Yeah. But they're in this world. And I guess the one, the one cast member married somebody that plays the bad guy, the bad girl in it. And, and they flip out <laughs> um, like that kind of fun stuff. Like I like hearing that. Um, I watched a little bit of it way back in the day when it started. And it's just not something I was ready to follow 10 years ago. Also <laughs> watching this guy like email and text people on his palm. One is hilarious, but <laughs> putting that out there, but yeah, definitely recommending that. How about you guys? Uh, well, I uh, was dragged to dumb and dumber too. <laughs> Um, I'm not, uh, fair. Fair warning. I'm not a huge fan of the first one. Uh, I'm even less of a fan of the second one. It was. It was just not good. <laughs> uh, um, if you've seen two previews for Dumb and Dumber Two, 
You've seen the movie for free. There you go. Um, and maybe it's just me, but Harry and Lloyd are for people who for two people who are supposedly like the best of friends. They're just unnecessarily cruel to each other. Like throughout the whole movie, like if I had a friend that did any of the stuff that they that they did to each other in the movie, I would not have that friend. That that would not be a person I'd want in my life. Um, but yeah, I mean, I guess if you want to wait for a red box, I wouldn't see it in theaters. I wouldn't see it on a um, a matinee. Uh, maybe a two dollar red box or a free on HBO. Man, that is bad. Bad. <laughs> um, I also saw the To Do List, which was a movie I'd wanted to see for a while. It stars Aubrey Plaza, mm-hmm. and it's about um, a valedictorian who knows nothing about um, sex, so she makes a to do list of things to do before college, and it's funny. I saw it on Showtime on demand. Uh, it was. Uh, <laughs> Glad I didn't see it in the theaters. It was, <laughs> yeah. it was good. It was good. I just wouldn't have wanted to pay theater prices for it. Yep. Uh, but it was, it was fun. It's a, cute, it's a cute movie. If it comes on Netflix, definitely give it a watch. It's fun. Uh, the, the cast in it is amazing. Uh, it's got um, Clark Gregg, uh, Phil Coulson's in it, um, Aubrey Plaza, as I spoke of, and um, oh, um, Will Arnett, I believe. No, not Will Arnett. Uh, Will Forte. Well, Forte is in it, too, and he's really good. And I also saw a movie Malengo saw. I saw Mockingjay Part 1. Mockingjay, oh my goodness, why did we make this Part 1? <laughs> really? Yeah, dude. Okay, so so like now now I'm holding off. I'm going to wait till the second one's almost out. Yeah, gonna, that's what I wanted I'm to gonna do. I'm going to go watch it so I can watch it back to back and get the whole part, basically. You mean the way it should have been done. Okay. As one movie. So, so what's your problems with this being a part one? Like, does it feel like part, like the first half of a movie? The whole time me and my buddies were watching this movie, we knew where they were going to break it, and we were waiting for the break. Like, oh, wait, it's coming. Anytime now. They're going to do it right there. That's the worst part about the parts. They're going to do it right there. Oh, wait, they didn't do it right. Oh, wait, wait, they did it right there. Okay. It, so now we have to wait. Uh, somebody had this argument on one of the podcasts that you and I listened to, Sorg. I don't know if you've gotten to it yet, but I kind of agree with uh, one of the people on the show where there's this problem that you have when you are translating a book to a movie where in a book, you can get away with a lot of stuff, add a lot of detail in there and, you know, leave it to the imagination or whatever. It helps drive like that setup. in the movie. They try to do that as quickly as possible, but sometimes explaining it in the movie is kind of stupid as to just show it. Okay. And I think that's where, I like fell off with this movie. Okay. This movie was a little boring. And me reading the book, I read the book after the last movie because I just wanted to freaking know what was going to happen. I found out what happened and watching this movie and knowing what's coming, I was kind of just like which is like the majority of people. Right? Yeah. That that like have watched, you know, the book is well read. So a lot of people know it's coming. And they're just kind of going through the paces on this thing. Same with The Hobbit. Yeah. And the one thing that's different. The Hobbit is different. The Hobbit is different because The Hobbit was once done in a 90-minute cartoon. And someone decided to break it up into And is the shortest of all the books that we split into three movies. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, let's let's be real. I think somebody said that for The Hobbit movie, what was it like? We're going to get... What was it? 90? It's not 90 minutes. That makes no sense. A 45 minute action scene. Yeah. I'll be honest. That's half the movie right there. I am totally, I'm okay with that. That's not half the movie. Have you seen those things? I know. It's going to be a three hour movie. They're at least two and a half hours. But still, I'm okay with a four. I think I'd be okay. It might justify it. Just a little uh, bit because I'm gonna wait. Part yeah, the first one on DVD. I'll just wait until the other two come out. We'll just go get it for her birthday or something, and we're just gonna slam through a yeah. six no, like eight hour movie. <laughs> I will. The one last thing I'll say about um, Hunger Games, real quick, is I was the person who did not watch or read the books until the last book. So oh. I watched the first 
second movie and I was I, the first one I kind of just was like whatever this is kind of weird the second one was really good because of the political transitions and transact or like you could see the you know how it related to I don't know our world whatever and then we get to the third one I read the book and I would say the book is a hundred times better than wherever they could possibly be going with this movie all and right, that's um, different than a lot of other people that read the books. I, I'm here to present a an altering opinion. Uh, <laughs> I read all three Hunger, Ga- Hunger Games books. Uh, I love the first Hunger Games book. I like the second one, and I kind of dismissed the third a little bit. Yeah, that's what uh, everybody said. But that's with the books. Yeah, I feel the I feel the exact opposite with the movies because I feel like the movies have been done better and better. And I really like Mockingjay Part 1. I'm looking forward to Mockingjay Part 2. Um, Philip Seymour Hoffman was fantastic. Like, he, him and Woody Harrelson, I could watch them in this world for hours. Woody because, Harrelson needed way more lines. More, yeah, more well, time on screen. Yeah, but he didn't have that much in the book. Like, in the third book. Because he, it's more about, you know the new world that Katniss is in and everything like that. Uh, Jennifer Lawrence has always was awesome. And the fact that they brought back, um, oh, I can never remember her name. Effie. Um, uh, what's her name? The, I don't the know. not, um, not, uh, hold on a sec. Uh, but they brought Effie trinket back from, uh, the Capitol mm-hmm. in this one. And Elizabeth Banks, Elizabeth Banks. Um, she was not in the books. She was not in the third book a lot. And they brought her character in for uh, this subplot. And her character brought so much life to the movie. And it brought like a little bit of a lightened aspect to it. Because she like her character was like one of the most flamboyant characters in the entire book series and movie series. She is in and, the third book. Yeah, but not really as much as she was in the movie. In the movie, she's all over the place. Yeah, but she does follow. She does follow them in the book. In that she's in that party. That uh, that goes into stuff. But I, I agree with with what you're saying. Yeah, I mean, I thought I thought the cast was Julianne Moore was really really good. Like Julianne Moore was exactly what I wanted from her character the leader of District 13, like uh, President Coyne, I believe. But she was really, really good in it. Uh, I I really liked the movie. I wasn't bored by it at all. Um, probably because I don't remember the third book as much as maybe you did, Malenga, because it was a while ago when I read it. Yeah. But I really enjoyed it. Like I, I thought everyone who was in it did a good job, and I thought it broke at a nice place to get us to the finale. Because I, I had an issue with, when they did uh, when they split up Harry Potter, the last book. I thought the split was a little awkward and forced. But I, I feel like the split in this one is good for where we needed to be. Yeah, my thing with the split is it's not that the split was bad. It was predictable. And obviously, if you read the book, it's kind of like that's that made sense. I thought uh, the, the person that played uh, Coin could have been more... Um, I don't know, because they're a military, that district, right? So I don't know if I was looking for something more, like, cold and to the point, or, like, I don't know. There's just something there that was missing. And, and I the, don't know. I, I feel like she was that, though. Yeah, I don't know if I got that totally. Okay. But, um, but yeah, Sorg, uh, Sorg's waving at me. All yeah, hey, we actually got uh, watched in the, in the chat. Uh, Wheels actually got this. He watched G.I. Joe Redemption. And he's also on the BoJack uh, Horseman train. So welcome to it, Wheels. (laughs) So good to see that uh, the infectious spreading of uh, BoJack Horseman. Come on, G.I. Joe Redemption was, again, probably a good HBO movie uh, and way better than the first. Yeah. Well, all right, but that's a low bar that I heard of. I know. Seriously. Other thing, that I, is a low bar. Other thing I throw in there. I, I watched the le- the latest season on Netflix of The League. Yeah. Yes. 
Yes. Um, <laughs> um, there's a Seth Rogen is featured early in the season. Yeah. Um, and they're doing an interesting time thing in this. Not time travel, but kind of a curious time side line. story thing. Yeah. Uh, that was that was the first episode of that season. It, but it was the most fantastic episode for me of just put on randomly when Missy sat down to watch something random with me. Fair enough. Okay. Because it's like, what is this show? Um. Anyways, <laughs> but nope, that's what I got. It's about fantasy football. Apparently, yeah, that apparently that just makes it good as it is. This is an show. awesome show. Um, I think it's better compared to its counterpart of Always Sunny in Philadelphia, which Ooh. just kind of got raunchy Ooh. and crazy. But oh no, I, I'm with I'm with him on that. Um, yeah, w- we got to wrap this up because uh, I'm getting stuff from my wife and she doesn't seem happy. Go have dinner. You have company. <laughs> Don't I eat know. our pizza. <laughs> I know, right? The pizza, which is from the place Slice on Broadway. Thanks to... a lot for supporting us. Slice and Broadway. unfortunately, Malengo has guests, so he can't eat any. Yes, but it's good. Can I have some Sorg? Yes, I'll fax it to you. <laughs> okay, good. Slice uh, on Broadway, now a faxable pizza. Where can we find you guys? Mike? Uh, well, I'm at MadMike4883 on the Twitter machines, and I also post regularly on our Facebook group, the Rambling Movie Minute. Sorg. I'm at Sorgatron. I got a Sorgatron.com. I got a little daily podcast I've been having fun with, uh, talking about whatever I want to uh, four days a week. So have fun with that. I've been hearing those people are apparently uh, really digging it. So it's just 10 minutes I do every day. Uh, and every, all the other shows, uh, SorgatronMedia.com, PittsburghWrestling.com. And uh, yeah, uh, Podcamp Pittsburgh. We've got a lot of, if you're interested in social media podcasting, a lot of videos are going up, including my video podcasting 101 and 201s are up as of this afternoon. So that's what I got. Nice. And you can find me on Twitter at Rambling Mango. Also, uh, like Mad Mike said, we do have a Facebook group at uh, the Rambling Movie Minute. And I was actually posting stuff, and it was blocking. Buffer was was buffering me. I was very upset about that. You got rebuffed? That. I got rebuffed. Mm-hmm. So I, I, I'm buffering, I, buffering, I, buffering. I fixed, the, I fixed that connection, so you should be seeing stuff. I like to – I always find random funny news stuff, and I like to uh, buffer that to our Facebook feed. Um, oh, yeah, with, with that uh, – I think that's also, it. On the Facebook group, I'm going to put a poll up. Tell us your favorite Christmas movie for the month of December. Oh, oh yeah. I like that. Maybe we should have people vote on what movie we should yeah, watch. We should, do, we should do it. Uh, no, we don't need to have a vote because there is only one answer, and that answer is Die Hard. <laughs> <laughs> Someone told me I need to curl my toes, uh, take my shoes off and curl my toes wherever I land when I take my first Fist flight. with at the your end of toes. The yes. That was, that was fantastic. Oh, All right, Mike, I'll take us out of here. Yes, well, that is it. And until next week, have a rambling movie minute. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. Hi, everyone. Do you like video games? Do you like reading about video games? Do you like listening to podcasts about video games? Why don't you check out insertcointobegin.com? New articles going up daily, and you can check out our podcast, Boss Battle, on sorgatronmedia.com.